Male Genital System The male genital system consists of the internal and external organs responsible for reproduction and urinary functions. This includes organs like the testes, prostate, and penis, all working in tandem to produce, store, and transport sperm, as well as to produce male sex hormones. These organs also ensure the safe passage of sperm during ejaculation and play a key role in the urinary system. Internal genital organs. Internal organs consists of testes, ductus deferens, seminal gland, prostate, bulbarethral glands, and male urethra. Testes and epididymis. Here is a detailed explanation of testes, Leydig and Sertoli cells. Leydig cells, located between seminiferous tubules, are responsible for the production of testosterone, the main male sex hormone. Sertoli cells, on the other hand, are located inside the seminiferous tubules and provide nutrients to developing sperm cells, while also forming the blood testis barrier to protect sperm from the immune system. Testicle, testis. The testicles are oval-shaped organs that produce sperm and testosterone. They are enclosed within the scrotum and divided into lobules by septa. Each lobule contains seminiferous tubules where sperm is produced. Testes Location and Descent During fetal development, the testes descend from the abdomen to the scrotum. This descent is necessary as the testes need to be cooler than the body's core temperature for optimal sperm production. External Structures of Testes The testes are covered by several layers, including the tunica vaginalis, derived from the peritoneum, the tunica albuginea, a dense layer of connective tissue, and the tunica vasculosa, which contains blood vessels. Internal structures of testes. Inside the testes are lobules, each containing seminiferous tubules, where sperm production occurs. These tubules are surrounded by connective tissue layers like the tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa, which provide structural support and protection. Internal structures of testes consists of the following parts. Tunica albuginea, the tunica albuginea is a dense, fibrous layer of connective tissue that surrounds the testis, providing structure and protection. It is a thick, tough layer that forms the outer covering of the testis. Internally, the tunica albuginea sends septae, thin partitions, into the testis, dividing it into lobules. This layer also plays a role in maintaining the shape of the testis and ensuring that the seminiferous tubules are securely enclosed for optimal sperm production. Tunica vasculosa. The vascular layer, also known as the tunica vasculosa, is the innermost layer of the testis, lying beneath the tunica albuginea. It consists of a network of blood vessels that provide nourishment to the testicular tissue. This layer is crucial for delivering oxygen and nutrients to the developing sperm cells within the seminiferous tubules, ensuring their proper growth and development. The vascular layer also helps remove waste products generated during spermatogenesis. Septae, or the septa of testis. The septae are thin, fibrous partitions that extend from the tunica albuginea into the testis. These septae divide the testis into individual compartments or lobules. Each lobule contains one to four seminiferous tubules, where sperm is produced. The septi not only serve as structural supports, but also help organize the internal structure of the testis facilitating efficient sperm production and transport. Lobules of the testis. The lobules of the testis are small pyramid-shaped compartments formed by the septi. Each lobule contains one to four tightly coiled seminiferous tubules, which are the sites of sperm production. The lobular organization allows for the efficient production of sperm, as each lobule provides an isolated environment where spermatogenesis can occur. The number of lobules and the quality of spermatogenesis can affect male fertility. Seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules are coiled structures located within the lobules of the testis and are the primary site for sperm production, a process known as spermatogenesis. These tubules are lined with Sertoli cells, which support and nourish developing sperm cells and germ cells that develop into sperm. The walls of the seminiferous tubules are crucial for the maturation of sperm, which are then transported through the tubules to the reet testis for further maturation before ejaculation. 
These explanations provide a clear understanding of the internal structures of the testes, particularly their roles in supporting sperm production. Sertoli cells and blood testis barrier. Sertoli cells not only provide nutrition to the developing sperm, but also form a crucial barrier called the blood testis barrier. This prevents the immune system from recognizing and attacking the developing sperm as foreign cells. Leydig cells, located between the seminiferous tubules, Leydig cells are responsible for producing testosterone, which is critical for male sexual development, the production of sperm, and overall male reproductive health. Mediastinum of the testis. This is a connective tissue structure located in the posterior part of the testis. It contains the rete testis, a network of tubules that help transport sperm from the seminiferous tubules to the epididymis. Epididymis. The epididymis is a tightly coiled tube that sits on the back of the testes. It stores and allows the sperm to mature over time. Once matured, sperm is transported to the ductus deferens for ejaculation. Ductus deferens. The ductus deferens or vas deferens is a muscular tube responsible for transporting sperm from the epididymis to the urethra during ejaculation. It has several parts, the scrotal part within the scrotum, funicular part in the spermatic cord, inguinal part passing through the inguinal canal, and pelvic part inside the pelvis. Scrotal part. The scrotal part of the ductus deferens is located within the scrotum, a sac that holds the testes. This section begins at the tail of the epididymis, where sperm is stored and matured. The scrotal part of the ductus deferens is responsible for collecting sperm from the epididymis and preparing it for transport through the rest of the VIS deferens during ejaculation. This part is covered by connective tissue and is essential for initiating the journey of sperm out of the testes. Funicular part. The funicular part of the ductus deferens is located within the spermatic cord, which contains blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatics essential for supporting the testes. This part ascends through the spermatic cord and plays a role in carrying sperm from the scrotum toward the abdominal cavity. The funicular part is particularly important because it passes through the external structures that help regulate temperature and blood flow to the testes, ensuring optimal conditions for sperm transport. Inguinal part. The inguinal part of the ductus deferens passes through the inguinal canal, a passage in the lower abdominal wall. This is a crucial segment because it allows the ductus deferens to enter the abdominal cavity from the scrotum. The inguinal part is located between the superficial and deep inguinal rings, and its position within the inguinal canal makes it vulnerable to hernias, which is a common medical issue related to this area. Pelvic part. The pelvic part of the ductus deferens is the segment that enters the pelvic cavity after exiting the inguinal canal. It travels along the lateral wall of the pelvis, running close to the bladder before joining the duct of the seminal gland to form the ejaculatory duct. This part dilates at its distal end to form the ampulla of the ductus deferens, where sperm can be temporarily stored before ejaculation. Its proximity to the seminal glands allows it to receive secretions that contribute to the formation of semen. Seminal gland. The seminal gland produces 50 to 80% of the ejaculate fluid. This fluid contains nutrients for the sperm and substances that help in sperm motility. The seminal gland's duct fuses with the ductus deferens to form the ejaculatory duct. Prostate. The prostate is the largest male reproductive gland producing about 30% of ejaculate fluid. This gland surrounds the urethra and plays an essential role in male fertility by secreting fluids that nourish and protect sperm. The prostate is divided into several zones, including the peripheral, central, and transitional zones. The transitional zone is particularly important as it's where enlargement occurs. Bulbourethral glands. Located near the base of the penis, these glands produce a lubricating fluid that helps during ejaculation. This fluid also helps to neutralize the acidity of urine in the urethra, ensuring safe passage for sperm. Male urethra. The male urethra is the tube through which urine and semen pass. It is divided into three parts, prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra is the portion of the urethra that passes through the prostate gland, 
and it is about three to four centimeters in length. It begins at the bladder neck and extends to the membranous urethra. This section serves as a conduit for both urine and semen. The prostatic urethra is notable for containing the openings of the ejaculatory ducts, where sperm and seminal fluid mix before entering the urethra during ejaculation. Another feature within the prostatic urethra is the seminal colliculus, an elevated area on the posterior wall, which contains the prostatic utricle, a vestigial structure, and the openings for the ejaculatory ducts. Surrounding this part of the urethra is the prostate gland, which secretes prostatic fluid, a component of semen that aids in sperm, motility, and protection. Membranous urethra. The membranous urethra is the shortest and narrowest section of the male urethra, measuring about one to two centimeters in length. It passes through the urogenital diaphragm, a muscular floor of the pelvis, and is surrounded by the external urethral sphincter, which is a voluntary muscle that allows for conscious control over urination. This part of the urethra is particularly sensitive to injury, especially during pelvic trauma or medical procedures like catheterization. The membranous urethra plays an important role in controlling urine flow and ensuring that urination and ejaculation occur at appropriate times, as the external urethral sphincter provides control over the release of fluids. Spongous urethra. The spongous urethra, also known as the penile urethra, is the longest segment, approximately 15 to 20 centimeters in length. It extends from the membranous urethra through the length of the penis, specifically within the corpus spongiosum, an erectile tissue that surrounds the urethra and helps protect it during an erection. This section of the urethra is divided into two further parts, the bulbar part, located at the base of the penis, and the pendulous part, which runs along the shaft of the penis. The spongious urethra serves as the passageway for both urine and semen, though these fluids never mix due to the actions of the internal urethral sphincter, which closes off the bladder during ejaculation. The spongious urethra opens at the external urethral orifice, located at the tip of the glans penis, through which urine and semen exit the body. External genital organs, External genital organs consists of penis and scrotum. Penis. Here is the detailed structure of penis. Root of the penis. The root is the internal part that attaches the penis to the pelvic structures. It contains the bulb and crura, which are connected to the erectile bodies of the penis. Body of the penis. The body consists of two corpora cavernosa and one corpus spongiosum, erectile tissues that fill with blood during an erection. Glans penis. The glans is the sensitive, rounded tip of the penis. It contains numerous nerve endings and is responsible for sexual pleasure. The foreskin, or prepuce, covers the glans and can be retracted. External structures of the penis. The penis is supported by the fundiform and suspensory ligaments, which attach it to the pubic bone. Internal structures of the penis. The penis contains deep and superficial veins, arteries, and nerve bundles that facilitate blood flow and erection. The corpora cavernosa have spaces that fill with blood to maintain an erection. Scrotum. The scrotum is a sac that houses the testes and maintains a temperature lower than the body's core, essential for sperm production. It contains muscles like the cremaster muscle, which help regulate the distance of the testes from the body based on temperature. So in conclusion, the male reproductive system is not only essential for reproduction, but also plays a significant role in overall male health and vitality. Beyond the production and transport of sperm, the system is deeply involved in hormone regulation, particularly through testosterone, which influences everything from muscle mass to mood. The health of this system can be an indicator of broader physiological well-being making it important to address any issues such as hormonal imbalances or reproductive complications early. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle, regular checkups, and being aware of potential signs of dysfunction are crucial for long-term reproductive and general health in men. Ultimately, the male reproductive system highlights the intricate connection between reproductive health and overall wellness.